Hey everyone, in this video, I quickly want to go over some of the changes to performance for Azure SQL Hyperscale tier. Now, the first one is simply enhanced capacity. So the maximum size of a single database, not elastic pool, but for a single database, they have increased the size from 100 terabytes up to 128 terabytes. And if you think, well, that's kind of a, a strange number. Why 128? Really, what this does is it puts Azure SQL Hyperscale maximum as the same of many other competitor products. So now we get a near 25% maximum capacity capability. The other big thing is about transaction logging and how fast we can insert data into the database. So before this number was 100, a similar thing there, um, maybe bytes per second. And what they've actually done is increase this by 50%. So now the maximum is 150 maybe bytes per second. So what that now means is how much quicker I can do 50% more inserts into my database. And that is both for the single and the elastic pool. So that is all about the log performance. But really the key feature I wanna talk about in this video is something called continuous priming. Now that's in limited public preview right now, you'd request it via a form. And it's all based around the idea, well, we have our primary replica. So I can think, okay, I've got my primary replica, all good. And remember, what we actually have is we then have the page servers. So we have this whole set of different page servers. And so there's n number of those page servers that actually have all of the various content that we go and fetch and we talk to from the page server. But one of the things it does for performance purposes is we have this idea of a hot cache in the replica. So I have this idea of this cache for the pages that it is constantly talking to. So think of this as its hot pages. So, hey, I'm constantly interacting with these sets of records. So it will have it locally available. So it'll be that much faster when it goes and interacts with them. Well, now remember, I can have zero to four HA replicas. So now let's think, okay, I'm just gonna draw one of them, but this could be zero to four of these high availability replicas. And it also has this cache but it's gonna be empty. So what would happen is if I actually did a failover, I will get a performance impact because this fails over to this, so this instance now becomes the primary. So I'm doing those interactions with it. This cache now has to get populated with the records from the page servers. So there will be a performance impact. So Microsoft did some testing on this. And what they saw was about four minutes using their OLTP benchmarks. Therefore, continuous priming helps greatly reduce that time. So there's a new process in all of the compute layers for both the primary and the HA replica. So what this is now doing is the primary replica is now tracking those hot pages, i.e. the pages that it's constantly using, it's tracking those pages. And what it does is the primary replica tells the page servers on a very short interval, hey, this is the active page list. So I can think about it saying, hey, um, my page server, this is the list of really what is my active page list. So the page servers know what are the hot pages that the primary replica is seeing. The HA replicas will, again, on a very short interval, ask the page servers, hey, what are the hot pages? So now the cache server says, hey, what are the hot pages? 
and the page servers will respond with those actual pages. So if these were in it, it's going to send those pages. So it's got this list right here. It's going to send the actual hot pages. It can then populate those into its cache. So it's going to keep its cache populated and ready for failover. And so that four minutes in, the, again, the Microsoft testing with that OLTP benchmarking goes down to sub minute. Now, remember, there's still a little bit of performance penalty. It's much less because this isn't real time. There's that cadence. And so what's going to happen here is the exact amount of penalty time you'll get in the performance depends on, well, what is the delta between the actual hot pages here and that cadence of updating it. There isn't really any performance penalty to having this capability. It's super low overhead, even if I had all four of the HA replicas. And this continuous priming is available for both the single and the elastic pool configurations. So it's really just a great capability. And that was it. I just wanted to update from my SQL hyperscale video because these are recent changes. So capacity up to 128 terabytes. The log performance has gone up 50% to 150 megabytes per second. But this continuous priming feature is going to be huge so I avoid any performance penalty when I actually have to go and do a failover because of that populated cache in the, the replica. Hope that helped. Till next video, take care.